Krita is not the best tool for all types of UI jobs, but for anything that's like an icon or something you're going to paint on, it's pretty cool. So I've made some hearts and we're going to see how to create these in this video. Normally it's something you want to do with a vector drawing program and I'll show you why in a second, but let's create it in Krita. So we'll start with a circle, a selection, fill it with white. Then you want to duplicate it, move it around. Let's center both balls and then with the multi brush tool set to the horizontal mirror mode, we can paint the base of the shape on a new layer. So use some stabilizer or something like that to make it easier to draw accurately. Then let's merge the shapes together, fire up the fill tool and fill it. But when you get there, you can still paint a bit using the mirror mode and try to refine the shape a little bit. And you can always use the rectangle selection tool and then scale on the Y axis to modify the shape of your heart, like the bottom tip. And I'll use the tool to scale it a bit on the horizontal axis as well. So now we can see one of the issues of working with pixels. It's a bit hard to get the right shape and to make it really smooth and crisp. So here we are in Affinity Designer and I just want to show you why we use vector for UI design in general. So the first reason is simply that your work is resolution independent. It will always be crisp, at least the, the base shape. And remember that you can paint inside of those shapes in Krita using the clipping masks. So you benefit from really crisp silhouettes and you can still achieve any painterly art style or whatever. And the second reason is that you can easily instantiate vector shapes. So here I've got half a heart that's duplicated in my scene. And Affinity Designer keeps these so-called symbols in sync. So I can change half of the shape and the changes get synced on all my duplicates. Last but not least, uh, the good thing with vector tools is that you can quickly change their colors and add strokes to create some outline, which is quite handy as well. To make it a bit easier for us to create the sprite, I went ahead and made those shapes. You can find them in the video description. That's a Krita file. And we're going to paint inside of them using clipping groups. So first of all, the heart. Uh, the trick is to first give it a bit of volume with a gradient. I'm going to use a very saturated tone, a bit on the sides as well. And as far as UI in, is concerned, I like to make it very sharp because that's a key piece of information we're giving to the player, like their health. We really want them to be able to read it easily. It's a lot easier if your icon is quite sharp. Light is kind of coming from the top, but I do want to add a bit of contact shadow or proximity shadow between the heart itself. That's a round shape that has some volume and the base. Even if there is no base and we just have the icon, uh, this shadow around the edges creates some kind of natural outline that, that will make it pop of the background. I'm not using the symmetry and that's on purpose. That's to make the shape a bit more natural. Now I'll shift the hue a little bit and add some of that outline also at the bottom of the heart. There's no reason for it not to have it. There again, it's going to help the asset pop from the base. I want to add a bit of shadow inside of the shadow area with the gradient tool to give it some, some variation. With the contiguous selection tool, you want to select the shadow area, remove the top part, then grab the gradient tool and just fill it up with the gradient. Let's now add some highlights. So to do that, you want to add a new layer and paint some small dots like these. They are going to face the light, more or less. So you want to add them around the top of the shape. So one dot or one highlight, you know, will correspond to one light source. But as the heart is kind of split in two, it's normal to have two highlights, one on each side. Now the heart needs a bit more contrast. So let's add a new layer, set it to something like the overlay blending mode. And with an airbrush, 
I'll use the clip alpha option and with a light color you will paint around the top of the heart with a darker tone around the bottom of it. So here's the before and after. The heart might not look too great from up close, but if you zoom out, which will be a bit more like what we'll have in game, at least it's decent. Then as far as the base is concerned, I'm going to keep that dark tone, duplicate the base and scale it down. On this new copy, I want a lighter tone, just so that there's a clear outline around it. Now let's add some kind of drop shadow from the heart and to do that we'll create a clipping group with the mask and I'll just draw the shape of the shadow itself. I'm using the dark color from the base and let's isolate it and you just have to connect the sides like that very sloppily. It's not a problem and then you can fill inside of it and when you go out of the isolation mode, yeah all right I have to erase a bit of that but you have your drop shadow. And now to soften this shadow a little bit, you can always add some uh, transparency mask and with some black tone, use the gradient tool again and you're going to remove some of that shadow. Now it's lacking contrast a little bit, so let's add a filter layer. Something in the adjust category, like I like to use the color adjustment tool. And if you create a bit of an S curve, you're going to increase the contrast. So this S curves means lower the value of the dark tones and increase the value of the top tones. It's going to um, increase the saturation as well. And there we've got a base. If I zoom out, you can see it's decent. It's not extraordinary, but it's decent. I have little time today, so that's it for this tutorial. Thank you kindly for watching. See you in the next one.